Hi, this is Anne with an anagram on converting code to um, converting JavaScript code to object constructors. Uh, I have some code that draws a web page, and this is much like what you worked with last week. Um, you're going to have another exercise in drawing flags. As you recall from last week, we could do rectangles and circles, and you can create an enormous number of different national flags with those two shapes. But this week, we're going to add triangle. And we're also going to add um, a much more generic shape called shape, which um, can be defined by simply a number of points. And with a little imagination, you can see that this pentagon, if you add vertexes near the center, can be converted into a star. And um, what you'll see is, what you'll notice right away if you look at flags, is that um, with triangle, you can do an enormous number of um, different flags. And um, the one of my favorites is the flag of South Africa, which can be done completely with uh, rectangles and triangles. So if you try the flag of South Africa, don't be tempted to use shape. Um, really, it's a much more interesting exercise if you do this by laying down rectangles and triangles in the right order. Um, but many students like to draw flags with, with stars in them. So if you have that impulse, I'm going to give you shape, and you can um, figure out a way to make that make stars if you are so um, inclined. That won't necessarily be a, an assignment. So back to the code. Um, in the index, if you remember last week, what we did was we had a different source code file for each of our different shapes, and then one for draw. So that when we ran draw, we had the ability, for example, to make a point at a particular location on the screen, and then use that point to help make a rectangle um, that, that's upper left corner is at that point, has a certain width and height and color. And this week, what we're going to do is convert these to um, these make rectangle functions, um, which gave us a nice dependable object. We're going to go all the way and make those into constructors. So when you get this code, I think what's going to happen is you're going to have, I'm going to have converted point, which I'll do in this video. I'm going to convert rectangle, which I'll do in the next video, shape is already in the form of a constructor. So you'll just get shape ready to go if you want to use it. You have to give it an array of points in order to locate its specific vertices. Um, I did want to have one example of an object that has a property that is an array. So shape is good for that. Um, I encourage you to try it in at least one flag, but just don't go overboard with it. So um, what we're going to do here is I'm going to walk through taking point first in this video and converting the little functions that we had last week, make point and point to string, into an actual constructor. We like constructors because um, they continue to encapsulate complexity. They are similar to how objects are made in other languages. Um, there are deep fundamental language lawyer differences between objects in JavaScript and objects in most other languages, which are made with classes. But the constructor sort of bridges those differences. If we use a constructor in JavaScript, um, which is perfectly JavaScript-y, then we um, are used to making objects the way they're made in other languages, and we have our code um, really well organized. So um, I'm going to pull up shape over here on the right, um, split this panel into two columns, just to point out the differences between, and I think I'll go ahead and close this workspace. So if you recall, last week, we created these little dependable um, objects where we have a function called make point, which constructs a point with an object literal, and then uses assigns to the two-string method property, a function that lives in that same file. And I think the only thing different between this file and what you probably ended up with last week is I moved make point to the top just because 
this is what we're going to convert to the constructor. And it's a little bit easier to see, see what's going on if you start with this at the top of your file. So this is code we came up with to create dependable objects. This over here is a full-fledged um, full constructor. Uh, conventionally, the constructor name is the name of the object capitalized. So it's one of the few times when we use a capital letter at the beginning of a function. Um, constructors are functions, though, so they have a very classic function declaration format. Um, in our case, for shape, we're handing in a list of points and a color. For point, we will end up handing in the same two location x and y values that we were handing in before. But one of the differences is when you get inside of a constructor, when it's running, um, a reference to the object being constructed already exists. And that's what this is. Um, I often say, when you see this, say my or my object. But technically, this is a reference. Um, it is effectively a pointer to a place in memory. And one of the differences between a constructor and any other function is that when, the, when this code runs, this already exists. So I'm just going to go through and convert make point to a point constructor. First part is simple. It has the name of the object in uppercase. And then we don't need to create an object literal. What we, and we don't return. The book makes a big point of that, that you don't want to return anything from your constructor. The new um, operator takes care of that for you. So really, the only thing we have to do here is that these become assignments. Um, and we are assigning to this.x, not just any old x. And that becomes a statement. And here, we assign to this.y. And since we're not inside an object literal, this becomes an equals, and that becomes a semicolon. And this.toString, let's assign it the name of this function. Now, that actually is a legitimate constructor. We don't have to move this function into the constructor. We're going to do that, um, but we're going to come back and do it after we have figured out how to use this constructor in our code. So if I did this right, and I save it now, and I'm going to reformat it with a control shift B, okay, I now have a constructor function which assigns location x to this.x, location y to this.y, and this function to the method property toString. And it's my contention that this should work an awful lot like our old code did. So I'm going to go over to draw. And there are an awful lot of calls to make point. So I'm going to use my control F key to call up the, um, the editor, um, the find and replace. And I'm going to change make point into new point. I could type these one at a time, uh, but it turns out it's a nice simple replacement. When you are calling a constructor, you always use the new operator, and then you simply use the function name of the constructor, which is generally the name of your object capitalized. And that's the only change that actually has to happen. So if I rerun my code, um, if I run this, everything gets saved, my little dots become X's, and I ran the wrong file, which we all do all the time. So now I'm going to run this file. I'm still pointing to point.js, and I'm going to come up here and open a new version of this window. And you can see that this code is still working. Um, if you need to be convinced, we can always do the little trick um, that for right now we can make our Japanese flag blue. Save that, come over here, shift refresh. 
Um, it's always good to change something trivial when you're refactoring and all you're doing is changing how the code works, but you're not changing how it's supposed to behave. And then you know you're actually running the version of the code you think you are. So that's all that's involved in changing the point that we had, la the make point function we had last week to, um, to a legitimate constructor. However, if my colleague Mark Tony or any other professional JavaScript programmer opened this up, they'd have a bit of, a, of an aneurysm about having a function down here that's outside the constructor, not defined to be absolutely positively only exist inside the constructor, and yet is using this references. So let's go ahead and finish this. Um, in order to move this into the constructor, it's actually like super simple. All I do is control X, move this here, and let's see. Um, the one thing I have to do is when we are declaring this function as part of the constructor, it's an anonymous function. And that's not, it shouldn't be scary. Anonymous things have no name. So here we took a named function and we were assigning its name to toString. And now we're simply taking the whole function declaration and returning and assigning it to toString. I'm going to control shift B to reformat to see if the, um, the IDE, oh, hang on. Okay, so the IDE seems to agree with me that this two string is now a function inside here. And that's really all that's involved in moving a function inside the constructor from outside the constructor. So um, control S to save that. Go back here, let's make um, Japan's circle purple. So we know we're running new code when we come over here. I'm not going to rerun it. I'm simply going to go over here and control um, and shift refresh. And I can see that I'm still um, drawing. I'm clearly making all my points because all of these things depend on points. That's all for part one. Um, I'll be back shortly with a part two where we uh, do the same thing for rectangle. One of the things you'll note about point is it doesn't have a draw method. It only has the two string method. So um, we'll want to do this one more time with rectangle just so you get a, a better feel for it. Back soon.